Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, dear my students of general secondary schools, uh, today we will continue the studying the chemistry course for the general secondary language schools. Welcome to Cairo Dar. Today we will continue studying iron metal and its, ex its extractions of uh, its ores. Uh, we transfer to the slide to see iron, like in the slide. Are, as we know that iron has the atomic number 26 and its electronic configuration argon 18 4s has two electrons 3d has six electrons uh, the nature the natural occurrence of the iron number one iron is not found freely except meteorites Number two, iron is found as ores, iron oxide mixed with impurities like silica, SiO2, aluminum oxide, calcium oxide, magnesium oxide. Number three, iron is the fourth element in the Earth's crust after oxygen, silicon, and aluminium. It's about 5% by mass. This mass increases towards the center of the Earth. NB, the suitability of the ore in extraction of iron economically depends on the three factors which are number one, iron percent in the ore, number two, the composition of the impurities in the ore, Number three, the type of harmful elements mixed with the, with the ore as sulfur, phosphorus, and arsine, arsenic. We have a question. Mention three factors affect on the suitability of the ore in the extraction of iron. The answer of this question in the last slide the suitability of the ore for extraction, number one, iron percent in the ore, number two, the composition of the impurities in the ore, number three, the type of harmful elements mixed with the ore as sulfur, phosphorus, and orzine. So the answer of this question is in the last slide. Now when we look to this table, we will compare between the ores of iron. We have four ores were four types of, ore, of the iron ores. Number one is hematite, number two is limonite, number three is magnetite, number four is cedrite. So the four ores of iron are magnet, hematite, limonite, magnetite, and cedrite. The scientific name of hematite is iron 3 oxide. The scientific name of limonite is hydrated iron 3 oxides. That means that hematite and limonite are iron 3 oxide. But limonite is hydrated compound. And when we look to the chemical formula of iron 3 oxide of the hematite, it's only iron 3 oxide without molecules of water like in hematite. So, hematite is iron 3 oxide, but limonite is hydrated by three molecules of water, hydrated iron 3 oxide. Magnetite is magnetic iron oxide, which has formula F3O4. Cedrite is iron 2 carbonate. Cedrite is iron to uh, carbonate. So, cedrite is different from limonite and cedrite that hem hematite and limonite are iron 3 oxides, but cedrite is iron to carbonate. And the chemical formula, formula of the cedrite is FeCO3. The properties of hematite. Hematite is red and easily to be reduced. Limonite is yellow and easily to be reduced. 
but magnetite is black and has magnetic properties. And siderite is yellowish gray and easily to, re to be reduced. And the percent of iron in these ores, hematite is about 50 to 60 percent. Lemonite, the, present, the, the percent of iron in the lemonite, about 20 to 60 percent. And the percent of iron in magnetite, about 45 to 70 percent. And the percent of iron in the hydrite, about 30 to 40, from 30 to 42 percent. There was a question in 1999, compare between hematite and limonite. And as we saw in the last table, we can make the comparison between hematite and limonite, or comparison between hematite and magnetite. Remark that magnetite is a compound behave as a mixture of two oxides. Hematite, if it's RiO4, behaves as a mixture of two oxides ferrous oxide and ferric oxide. Ferrous oxide, FeO, and ferric oxide, Fe2O3. Ferrous oxide is iron 2 oxide. Ferric oxide is iron 3 oxide. Note that there, there is a difference between ferrous and ferric. Ferrous is iron 2. Ferric is iron 3. The relation number of iron equal plus 2 in case of ferrous. But in case of ferric, the oxidation number of iron is 3, plus 3. Give reason, magnetic magnetite iron oxide is a mixed oxides. That's because when it reacts with concentrated acids, two types of salts are produced, as in the equation. Ferric oxide, uh, sorry, uh, mag uh, magnetic oxide if it is RiO4 plus 8 moles of HCl concentrated acid in the presence of heat, it's produced, it produces FeCl2 ferrous chloride plus 2, mole, 2 moles of ferric chloride FeCl3 plus 4 moles of H2O. So the reaction of magnetite iron oxide, magnetite iron oxide with the concentrated acids like HCl, it gives two types of oxide, of salts, ferrous, ferrous, oxide, ferrous chloride plus ferric chloride. That means, it, that means that magnetite, magnetite reacts with conic acids as two types of salts. Now, we study the extraction of iron from its ores. The extraction of iron or its metallurgy is the process of obtaining the, this metal in a form where it can be put in a practical use. So, extraction of the iron metal or its metallurgy, the process of obtaining this metal in the form where it can be put in the practical use, to practical use. This process of extraction consists of three stages. First stage, the ore dressing, and second is reduction of the ores. The third is iron production. So the extraction of iron from its ores is divided to three processes. Number one, the ore dressing, Number two, reduction of the ores. Number three, ore produ iron production. And the ore dressing, number one, this process is done to improve physical and mechanical properties of the ore by crushing, centering, concentration of the pure concentration, and the purification of the ore. So, to improve physical properties of the iron, this improvement is done under the name of ore dressing. So, the dressing process 
is done to improve physical, pro physical and mechanic mechanical properties of the ore by crushing process. B, centering of process. Number C, concentration and purification of the ore. Second step of dressing is improving chemical properties of the ore by roasting process. So in the dressing process, we have two processes. Number one is to improve physical, proper, physical and mechanical properties of the ore. Number two, improving the chemical, improve the chemical properties of the ore by roasting process. Second step in the extraction of the ore, of the iron from its ores, is the reduction of the ores. The reduction of the iron from its ores in the two furnaces. Number one, blast furnace, or it can be called high furnace. Second type of reaction of reduction can be done in the matrix furnace. So the reduction of iron from its ores, it will be done by, uh, by two uh, furnaces. Number one, by uh, in the blast furnace or high furnace. Number two, by matrix furnace. The second process, after reduction of the iron from its, uh, from its ores, that iron production. Iron production is done in oxygen converter. Now we study the ore dressing. We study the ore dressing. The aim of dressing, or the aim of the ore dressing, number one, increasing the concentration of iron in the ore by removing the unwanted impurities. Number two, improving the properties of the iron of the ore, which helps the successive stages of extraction. Number three, improving chemical properties of the ore by roasting process. So, the ore dressing, the ore dressing we will study, the aim of this process, the aim of the ore dressing is number one, increasing the concentration of the iron in the ore by removing the unwanted impurities, removing the, un the unwanted impurities. Number two, improving the properties of the ore which helps the successive stages of, the ext of extraction. Number three, improving chemical properties of the ore by roasting process. Crushing process and the dressing process. The aim of this process is operating to obtain iron in the small size that can be reduced easily. The first step in the dressing process, the crushing process. The crushing process, the crushing process and the first process of dressing, its aim is, or the aim of this process is operating to obtain iron or in a small size that can be reduced easily. Second process in the ore dressing is centering process. Centering process. The aim of this process to convert fine particles into bigger and homogeneous particles suitable for the reduction process. The third process in the ore dressing, concentration and purification of the ore. The aim of concentration process to remove most of the unwanted impurities from the ore and increase the percentage of iron in it. The concentration process takes place by physical and mechanical methods. The roasting process, it means heating of substance strongly in the air too. Number A, dry the ore. 
Number B, expel humidity. Number C, convert the iron ore into iron oxide. So, roasting of the substance means that uh, heating the substance strongly in the air to dry the ore and expel humidity and convert the iron ore into iron oxide and increase the ratio of iron in the ore. So, the heating of substance strongly in the air that's big too to dry the ore and expel humidity and convert iron ore into iron oxide and increase the ratio of iron in the ore according to the following equations first equation from extraction from uh, ferrous uh, from uh, cedrite which is ferrous carbonate by heating in the air current hot air current the heating of cedrite give ferrous oxide iron 2 oxide then iron 2 oxide by oxygen using heat or uh, in the hot air current it give iron 3 oxide iron 3 oxide which is called hematite and lemonite by heat it converts to iron 3 oxide so the heating of substance heating of cedrite heating of iron 2 oxide heating of iron 3 oxide three molecules of water hydrated iron 3 oxide heating of this substance convert the cedrite to iron 2 oxide and convert iron 2 oxide to iron 3 oxide hematite and convert limonite to hematite number E oxidation of some impurities like sulfur and phosphorus so the oxidation of sulfur converts sulfur to sulfur dioxide and oxidation of phosphorus by oxygen it converts this this phosphorus the phosphorus impurities to phosphorus pentaoxide here is a question a roasting of iron is a very important in the ore dressing process but this process pollute this process pollutant pollutes the environment so explain these pollutants in the chemical equations number two explain how you can convert these pollutants to useful impurities uh, useful compounds the answer of this question in the last equations the other question give reason ore dressing is important for iron ores before this reduction ore dressing is important for iron ores before their reduction to remove most impurities and improve the physical and physical properties of the ore second ore second process of the extraction of iron is the reduction so the reduction of the iron ores is occurred in two types of furnaces number one in the high furnace or blast furnace so the reduction process depends on the nature of reducing agent there are two types of furnaces which can be used in the reduction of iron ore uh, each one of these uh, furnaces has its reducing agent and when we study the blasting furnace which, which is called the high furnace we have to know its reducing agent when we study the matrix uh, furnace it has as a reducing agent as you see that carbon monoxide gas resulting from cook can be used in the blast furnace the first type of furnaces of reduction of 
iron ore. In the matrix, uh, matrix furnace, it can be used carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas, which are resulting from the nature, natural gas as a matrix furnace. So the reducing agent in plastic furnace is carbon monoxide gas. And the reducing, reducing agent of the matrix furnace is carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas, which are resulting from the natural gas. Now we will study the blast, the blast furnace, high furnace. Description of the furnace. Number A, its structure is made of steel, lined it from inside by fire brick. It's lined it from inside by fire, by fire bricks, bricks. Number B, its height about 25 to 35 meters. Its height about 25 to 35. to 35 meters. Its diameter from 1 meter to 80 meter. And the and the and the widest part. Number D, iron produced big iron. Iron produced is big iron. Scientific base of the reduction of, ore, uh, of iron ore in the high furnace is reduction of iron three oxide by CO resulting from cook. The operation which is which occurred in the high furnace. The furnace is fitted with charge, with the charge hematite plus coke plus limestone. The first step, the furnace is fed, is fed, sorry, is fed with charge of hematite plus coke plus limestone. Second step, a current of hot air is forced and the following reactions takes place. Role of coke. Coke reacts with hot air and heat is produced which rise the temperature of the furnace. So coke is symboled by carbon, by C carbon, which is oxidized and the hot air oxidation of carbon to carbon dioxide. This reaction is exothermic reaction. Carbon monoxide plus carbon, coke carbon, and the hot air give two moles of carbon monoxide, and this also exothermic reaction. Carbon monoxide, which is obtained from coke, is used as a reducing agent for the ferric oxide to produce iron plus three moles of carbon dioxide. Big iron, the iron produced by the blast furnace, by the high furnace, is called the pig iron. That contains about 95% of iron and 4% carbon, with a small amount of manganese, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. Now study the matrix furnace to obtain a spongy iron. In this process, iron 3 oxide is produced by a mixture of carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas. As in Alexandria Iron and Steel Company in El Dgahleya. The reducing agent carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas are produced from natural gas by passing natural gas, which contains 90%, percent, 93% of methane with carbon, monoxide, carbon dioxide and steam 
in the special converter containing catalyst. So methane gas plus carbon dioxide plus H2O sorry. In the presence of nickel as a catalyst and heat it give it, uh, these compounds methane carbon dioxide water in the presence of nickel catalyst it produce uh, they, uh, they are produce three moles of carbon monoxide plus five hydrogens the charge of matrix of matrix furnace is hematite The operation in the matrix furnace, the iron ore Fe2O3 is introduced from the top of the furnace and the reduction gas, the reducing gas is CO plus H2, carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. A cycle of the reducing agent is closed. Cycle of reducing agent agents is closed. And as an equation, we will find that two moles of ferric oxide plus three moles of carbon monoxide plus three moles of hydrogen, they are the reducing agent. And the current of air, in the current of hot air, it will produce four moles of iron plus three moles of carbon dioxide plus three moles of H2O. After reduction, after, redu after the reduction process, the resulting the resulting gases CO2 and H2O. The resulting gases carbon dioxide and H2O are cooled and purified, then mixed with natural gas to be converted into reducing gases again CO plus H2. That means that cycle of reducing agent is closed. So when he when uh, we have a question, give a reason why the cycle of reducing the agent is closed. That's because the CO2 and H2O, which are produced or resulting from the reduction of ferric oxide in the matrix, in the matrix furnace, these gases which are produced are cooled and purified, then mixed it again with natural gas to convert it in reducing, in reducing gases again, CO and H2. Iron obtaining is porous and is mixed with impurities or hammering, on hammering impurities are, are separated and spongy iron is left. The equation in section 98, write short note on the spongy iron write short notes on spongy iron. Its iron mixed with impurities where it's produced from mixed matrix furnace and it has holes similar to that in the sponge. Question in session 99 show by simple equation only how you can extract spongy iron from iron ore. We have to write first equation for extraction the reducing agent from methane that two molecules of methane plus CO2 carbon dioxide plus H2O and the presence of nickel as catalyst it, that produce three moles of carbon monoxide plus five moles of H2. This reducing agent and the matrix furnace are used to reduce to reduce ferric oxide. The reduction of ferric oxide which is hematite in the presence of heat produce iron plus three moles of carbon dioxide and three moles of H2O, which are recycled again to produce carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide and, and hydrogen gas. 
So carbon dioxide and H2, which are produced of reduction, recyc are recycled again to produce carbon monoxide and H2. Question in first session in 2004 and 4, what is the role of natural gas? Natural gas, which is 93% of methane in the matrix furnace. What is the role of natural gas in the matrix furnace? The, the role of natural gas to react with CO2 and H2O to producing the reducing agents, the reducing gases, which is carbon monoxide and H2 gas, which reduce, which reduce ferric oxide into spongy iron, as according to the following equations. Give reasons. Reducing gases in the matrix furnace has closed cycle. We answer this question in the last slide. We answer this question in last slide. Note that scientific base of iron extraction from its ores in the matrix furnace, A, reducing of hematite or ferric oxide by reducing mixture, by reducing mixture CO plus H2 into iron called spongy iron. B, removed removal of impurities by hammering and resulting iron where the impurities leave the spongy iron. There is a question compare between reducing reduction furnaces. Compare between reduction furnaces. We have two furnaces, a blast furnace and a matrix furnace. The points of comparison between two furnaces, number one, the, cha the charge, number two, reducing agent, Number three, the iron produced. Number four, the produ producing company. And the blast furnace, the charge here is hematite plus coke plus limestone, but in matrix hematite only. The reducing agent in the blast furnace is carbon monoxide, but in the matrix furnace, carbon monoxide plus H2. The iron produced from, from blast furnace is pig iron and the iron produced from matrix furnace is spongy iron. The producing company of the blast furnace, Egyptian Iron and Steel Company in Helwan, and the company which, which, which produce uh, which produce iron from matrix by, furn uh, by matrix furnace is Alexandria Iron and Steel Company in the Khalaya. Now we study alloys. We will study the alloys. So we have to know what is the alloy. Alloy is a substance has physical properties of metals. For it's formed of two metals or more with a, a certain ratio as iron alloy, alloys, as iron alloys, ferromanganese or ferrochromium. And it may consist of metal and non-metal, which with a certain ratio as iron and carbon. So the alloy is substance which has proper, properties of the metals. Alloy has physical properties of metals. It formed of two metals or more with certain ratio as iron alloys as ferromanganese or ferrochromium and it may consist of metal and non-metal. So the alloy may consist of metal and non-metal with certain ratio as iron and carbon. Give reason, question here, give reason. Transition elements are characterized by, by the formation of several alloys. That's because the atomic radii of transition elements are relatively constant, 
are relatively constant. Question number two, metals are used industrial in alloys not as pure metals. Metals are used industri industrially is in alloys not as pure metals because alloys have new properties which differ from these of the pure metals. So the alloys have new properties differ from the f from the their pure metals, such as alloy resist corrosion, or alloys have the ability to increase the magnetic and electric properties. And alloys can be shaped easily. Number four, alloys are characterized by hardness. Preparation of, al preparation of alloys. First method, melting method. A second method, electrodeposition method. And the melting method, uh, by melting metals together by, requ by required ratios. So, in the preparation of alloys, we have two methods, melting method and electrodeposition methods. Melting method, by melting the metal, metals together by required ratio. Then the molten is left to cool. To cool. A second method is electrodeposition method for preparation of alloys. By electrodeposition of two metals or more at the same time, such as brass. Brass alloy is copper plus zinc that's used in the plating iron hard iron hand, uh, handless which are placed in the solution of copper and zinc ions types of alloys there are three types of alloys number one is interstitial alloy number two substitutional alloy number three intermetallic alloy so there are three types of alloys. Number one, interstitial alloy. Number two is substitutional alloy. Number three, intermetallic alloys. The interstitial alloy example, uh, iron carbon alloy, pure iron as other as other metals is formed of crystalline the pure the pure iron pure iron as other metals is formed from crystalline lattice like this crystalline lattice of metal atoms in a closed packed structure in closed packed structure on the hammering of the metal on the hammering the metal a layer of atoms can slip over other layer on hammering on this crystal lattice a layer of atoms can slip slip can slip over the other layer it's a layer and is a second layer in the state of introducing a small atoms to form alloy, introduce small atoms, small atoms. To form alloy, when introducing atoms, are smaller than the small space in the small space than small spaces. Introducing small atoms, introducing atoms, are smaller, are smaller than the small small spaces between the metal atoms between metal atoms they will fit this space and will lead to also we uh, lead also to char to change the physical properties of the metal introducing the small atoms in between the spaces between the crystal lattice Properties, properties of interstitial alloy. A. Change malleability and ductile, ductility. Number B. Effect on the melting point. 
per se affect electric conductivity and the magnetic properties of the alloy. Affect the strength of pure metal. Number two, substitu substitutional alloy. It's formed when some atoms of crystalline lattice of the pure metal are replaced by atoms of the metal added. Example, iron, chrome, chromium, iron, chromium, chromium alloy, gold and copper alloy, iron, nickel alloy. Conditions of substitutional alloy, they have the same diameter, crystalline structure, and chemical properties. They have the same diameter, same crystalline structure, same chemical properties. Give reason, copper, gold, copper, gold. Form substitutional alloy. Form substitutional alloy. Because they have same diameter, same crystalline structure, and chemical properties. Same chemical properties. A third type of alloy is intermetallic alloy. It's compound alloy. Intermetallic alloy can be called compound alloy. It's formed when the elements forming the alloy combine with each other chemically forming chemical compounds, which are characterized by the following. Number A, they are solid. Number B, chemical formula of these compounds Disobey the law of valency, such as Fe3C carbon. Uh, here in this alloy, uh, this alloy disobeys the law of valency. So, carb uh, the valency of carbon four it should be it should be write, uh, written here as Fe4, but the structure of this alloy. Is not obeying is not obeying the laws of valency. So the chemical structure of iron carbon alloy is Fe3 car of Fe3C, which is called iron carbide. This compound alloy, this intermetallic alloy between iron and carbon is called iron carbide cementite. This cementite or iron carbide has chemical formula Fe3, Fe3 carbon, Fe3 carbon, Fe3C. This Fe3, Fe3C is not obeys, is not obeying the laws of valency. Number C, this alloy can be formed by metals of the same group. That means that iron is not in the same group of carbon. This iron is uh, belongs to iron is belong belonging to the transition elements, but carbon is belong to P group of representative element. Here in this table, comparison between three types of alloys. Three types of alloys. Interstitial alloy, substitutional alloy, intermetallic alloy. Interstitial alloy, they are formed when the atoms of the added element occupy the space between the atom, the atom in the crystal lattice of the pure metal. But in case of substitutional alloy, they are formed when the same when some atoms of the crystal lattice of the pure metal are substitutional by the atom <coughs> sorry substitution by the atoms of the added metal of this occur and this occur when the atoms of alloy have the same diameter the same diameter same chemical properties and same crystal structure, crystalline structure. In the case of intermetallic alloy, they are formed when the elements 
forming the alloy combine chemically and chemical formula of this resulting compounds alloy is not obeys the valency this obeys the valency rules interstitial alloy example for, for interstitial alloy iron carbon alloy iron carbon alloy like steel an example for interstitial alloy gold copper alloy iron chromium alloy iron nickel alloy so maybe a question uh, of the type of alloys can uh, give you a question which ask about uh, iron carbon alloy uh, what uh, what this alloy is belong to interstitial alloy or substitutional or intermetallic uh, the question can be like that choose from four points give you an example of uh, these types of alloys like iron carbon or iron chromium uh, or uh, gold copper alloy and give you four uh, choices uh, interstitial alloy or substitutional alloy or intermetallic alloy or metal alloy and you have to choose one of these of these types of alloys the third the third example of the intermetallic alloy is a nickel three uh, nickel three aluminium from aluminium and nickel lead gold alloy AU lead gold alloy AU 2PB uh, iron carbide Fe3 carbon Fe3 carbon iron carbide or cementite interstitial alloy is mixed alloy but substitution alloy makes it alloy uh, intermetallic alloy is compound alloy is compound alloy now we are finishing the studying of uh, iron and the alloys and the next last lesson of the transition element we will study the physical properties of the iron and its reaction and goodbye now thank you Thank <laughs> you.